Hi, my name's Kath Bitzolt, and I'm here to tell you a story of pain and grace. I'm a full-time missionary, and it began in Sierra Leone. It's particularly for unreached people groups, that's my heart. And then it went to Sudan, where I joined a team. And in that team, we were serving in a village, people who didn't have the word written. And it was there that I met Martin, a German man, and we both had a passion for Jesus and a passion to reach people that didn't know about Jesus. And we decided through that two-year journey that God was leading us to be man and wife. And uh, we went to Germany at Christmas time to meet his family in church. He had already met my family in church. And in that time, he had to go for a hernia operation. And they told me the operation would only be 45 minutes. And it was one hour, two hour, three hours later. And when he came out, he was on machines and morphine. And I was speaking to him in English to say, Martin, I love you, I'm here for you. And the morphine was so strong, he couldn't even respond to me in English. He was speaking German, didn't really know who I was. And I started putting scriptures in German all around his bed and praying and trusting. I had no idea what was going on. I kept saying to the doctors, what's wrong? What's happened? They couldn't speak to me. They couldn't tell me in English what was going on. Four days later, Martin had a CAT scan. And then the doctor came in and he just said, there's no hope. There's cancer everywhere. It's in the intestines, the liver, the lungs, the brain. It's everywhere. And we just sat there and he said, the only thing you can do is trust your God. And we were shocked. We were stunned. And I held Martin's hand and I said to the surgeon, can we pray? And he said, I don't believe in your God. I said, but you said the only thing we can do is trust our God. So Martin prayed. And as the surgeon left, Martin turned to me and said, Kath, God has shown me in these days that life is all about eternity. And what is impossible for God is, what is impossible for man is possible with God. And it was, it was so intense. And I looked at Martin and I said to him, Martin, I still want to marry you. And he said to me, Kath, I can't offer you sex. I said, Martin, it's not about that. It's about running this journey with you. It's about being by your side in sickness and in health until death does part. My German visa expired on the 20th of February. Martin came out of hospital on the 17th of February. And I can remember his dad phoning me and saying, Kath, you can't go. And I said to him, we have to trust God. They said it would take five weeks to get the visa to come back to Germany. I had to get seven documents from many South African departments. But in 10 days, God provided everything miraculously. And I was on a plane coming back to my beloved Martin. And at the airport, we just embraced. And his face was all a bit blown up from the cortisone. But I could still look into those same eyes. And I knew God was going to do something great. And the verse that God had given us at the beginning that our relationship was to come together was, Behold, I begin a new thing, a new thing shall spring forth. And it was spring at the time in Germany, and all the spring flowers were springing forth. And the doctors were phoning every day to find out how Martin was doing. And every day we were walking an hour or two in the spring flowers, praying, singing praises to God. And people were saying, This is not possible. But with God, it's possible. And it was a miraculous that we were able to get married at the German court on the 7th of April. And it was such a joyous day as we came together. I didn't have my white dress, I wore a red dress, but I saw that as being symbolic as the blood of Jesus washing me white. And we got married and we were husband and wife. And then we had two glorious weeks of walking together and sharing about God, waiting for our church wedding. But then suddenly things went bad. Martin's breathing got worse and worse. We had to rush to hospital. And they gave us a room alone together. And I said to Martin, all I'd been believing was for his healing. I hadn't spoken to him or prepared him about death. And I looked into his eyes and I said, Martin, you're going to see Jesus. And the doctors had told us it's the end. And before they injected him with morphine, they said, we must share our last words. And I said to Martin, I love you so much. And he said, I love you too, Kath. And will you forgive me? I was like, for what? And he was like, for giving you such a hard time in Germany. I was like, you couldn't help it. You were sick. He said, Kath, please just tell me you forgive me. I said, I forgive you, Martin. He said, forgive me for not bringing you enough flowers. And I was like, Martin, I never expected it. But he wanted to be the husband 
to give me flowers, to bring me things, but the health just couldn't get in there. I was like, Martin, I forgive you. And the list went on, and I saw he was preparing himself to meet Jesus. And I said to him, Martin, I will hold your hand until Jesus takes it. You are not going to be alone on this journey. And I lay next to him and injected him with morphine, and it was an intense time of suffering. And three in the morning, he reached his hand across to me, and he said, Mein Schatz, ich liebe dich, which means, my darling, I love you so much. And I said, I love you too. And then later that day, I held his head and I sang Amazing Grace. I don't know where I got the strength, but it was from God. And then a friend read a scripture and he passed so peacefully. And I just realized that in this life, if you don't know Jesus, if you don't have a relationship with him, you can't pass through the valley of death without him. And you know what I realized that, is that a shadow, if you're passing through the shadow of the valley of death, there has to be light to give a shadow. And Jesus is that light. And Jesus was that light for Martin. Just before he died, I was giving him water. And he kept saying, thank you, Kath. And then he started saying, thank you, Jesus. And I thought, is Jesus here? Can you see him? Can, does it feel like Jesus giving him water? And it was amazing because he wasn't alone. I saw Jesus with him and Jesus was with me. And this has just been such an intense journey for me. It wasn't just the loss of my beloved Martin. It was the loss of a dream of being on the mission field with someone, serving together, helping each other. But now I believe I can go back to Sudan because now the people see a missionary who has suffered death like they suffer death. And I can say, I know what it's like. I know the pain, but I know that there's only one person, Jesus Christ, who can carry you through any and every situation. Martin had shared with me that he saw that God was putting life in eternity. Life isn't just about the context that it is on earth, but it's in the context of eternity. And suddenly death wasn't so scary for him, and it wasn't so scary for me, because we saw it in the light of Jesus, Jesus in our lives. And it made me realize that all the people around us in the hospital suffering from cancer, did they know that? Did they have peace, or were they fighting to hold on to life on earth? And I thought about all the people in the world. Maybe they're not suffering from cancer. Maybe you're not suffering from cancer. Maybe you're perfectly fine. Maybe everything in your life is fine. But maybe tomorrow it won't be. And are you looking at your life in eternity? Or are you just living day to day on earth? Are you just looking at the bank statement? If you have a car, if you have a house, if you're providing for your family. But are you providing for your family for eternity? And it's not just about you and your salvation. What about your family's salvation? What about sharing this hope with them? They could go tomorrow. You could go tomorrow. Do you have Jesus? I'm not just talking about religion. I'm talking about a relationship. Someone who can walk through the valley with you. Someone who says you don't have to fear death. You don't have to fear evil because I am with you. And that's what I pray and that's what I hope for every person in the world. And Jesus says, I don't desire that anybody should die. I desire that all should be saved. That's his desire. And so that's my desire too for the people in the village that I'm living with. They don't know. They don't have a Bible. You have a Bible. You have access to a Bible. You can go to a church. My people, they don't have that. And so I want to share with them, you don't have to go through death. You don't have to hang on to strongholds. There's Jesus who can set you free from all of that. There's hope. There's not depression. There's someone who can grab your hand and pull you out of it. There's someone who can walk you through it. And Jesus never promised that there would be no suffering. But he did promise that he'll never leave you and he'll never forsake you.